throughout times, the climate has always been changing. We have experienced ice ages 10 to 20,000 years ago, when the temperature was significantly lower than it is today, and a large part of Scandinavia was covered by ice. This meant that the global water levels were considerably lower than today. And approximately 60 million years ago, Denmark was covered by a warm sea with a water level 25 meters higher than today. In the ocean, there were corals, sharks, octopuses, and crocodiles. In Faxa Kalkpul, the remains from the climate of the past are found in the form of shark teeth as fossils from the Danian time. The climate has always been changing, and we have had to adapt just like we have to today. The future climate change will primarily affect us through water. Flooding and heavy rain will occur more frequently and the global water level will rise. Other areas will become drier and the absence of water will have serious consequences. When speaking of climate changes, there are two things that will affect how the world's population will manage in the future. It is the amount of greenhouse gas emissions and how we adapt our society to the brutal weather that awaits us. The combustion of fossil fuels and the consequential rise in temperature in the atmosphere will result in more violent weather on Earth. Therefore, it is important to stop this global warming by reducing the emission of greenhouse gases. A reduction of greenhouse gas emissions is possible if we change our current energy supply, which emits large quantities of greenhouse gases into green energy. This can be done by shifting from coal-based production of electricity to wind-based energy. Consequently, it is a matter of adjusting society to use less energy and to focus on green energy. In order to protect the Danish society against threats from future weather, it's necessary that we have a plan for preparing Denmark for future climate, in addition to reducing greenhouse gases. Vi kommer ud til at se et forandret vejr, som vil blive mere og mere voldsomt og mere og mere regn, der kommer på en gang de næste mange år. Og det vil sige, de regnbyer vi kender, de vil blive kraftigere og komme på en gang. Og vi skal simpelthen håndtere meget mere vand i vores systemer. So this is a big challenge for us all here in Denmark. In order to talk about climate change, it is important to understand the difference between weather and climate. Climate is the weather over time. It is the weather we can see when we have been here over many years. So that means that we look at how the summer is, what characterizes it, what kind of weather it is. Do we have a lot of rain? Do we have a lot of dry weather? Do we have a lot of sun skin? Så det er den statistik, man kigger på af vejret. Så det klimaet, det er ligesom vores oplevelse af over lang tid, hvordan vi husker, at det er at være der, hvor vi måtte være. Today, experts all over the world agree that the Earth is exposed to global warming, which means that the temperature on the Earth is increasing. Earlier, the climate changes developed slowly, but during the last 100 years, the temperature has risen by approximately one degree. The reason for the climate change is the combustion of fossil fuels, which flourishes in the Earth's atmosphere and thus reduces the radiation of heat from the Earth into space. If we see the Earth as a closed system, what it really is, so it means that when we affect the climate inside, so there are small damage also inside. And so it is that when we affect the atmosphere with greenhouse gases, Ja, så er det med til at skubbe på energiomfordelingen inde i atmosfæren, som generelt set betyder, at vi får en opvarmning. This means that it will rain more in some places on the Earth and less in others. This is due to the increasing temperature. The warmer it gets, the more water will evaporate from the sea. The water vapor is what falls back down as rain. 
We will also experience more powerful storms, such as hurricanes, since the warm air over the oceans reinforces them. Storms can cause flooding by forcing water over the coastal regions. The temperature is expected to increase by 3 to 4 degrees Celsius, but it can vary greatly in different parts of the world. In cooler regions, the temperature might rise by 5 to 6 degrees Celsius. Consequently, the ice on Earth will begin to melt, which amplifies the global warming because ice reflects the sun rays while water absorbs them. In other words, the water retains the heat from the sun rays instead of sending them back out into the universe. De beregninger vi laver i dag, der peger på at temperaturer inden for de næste 100 år på op til 4 grader er realistiske. Og det betyder ikke 4 grader alle steder, det betyder 4 grader nogle steder, men også mere andre steder. Og det har konsekvenser for nedbør og vandets kredsløb. Så selvom fremtiden er usikker, så ved vi allerede nu nok til at vi bør handle. Compared to other places in the world, Denmark is a peaceful oasis that only once in a while experiences relatively small natural disasters, as in 2011 when the torrential rain hit Copenhagen. But these disasters are peanuts compared to what happens in the rest of the world, where natural catastrophes cause damages worth billions of kroners and a loss of numerous lives. In 2011, when the cloudburst inundated Copenhagen, no more than 10 centimeters of rain had fallen. But the sewer's capacity was insufficient, so the water flooded roads and squares. The water ran into basements and houses and threatened vital power supplies for hospitals. Other places in the world, more violent storms and other types of disasters occur, causing far worse damages compared to what we experience in Denmark. For instance, the hurricane Sandy that destroyed big parts of the Caribbean and ravaged the east coast of the United States in 2012. In New York, the impacts of Sandy were serious and caused extensive floodings of tunnels and subway systems. More than 100 houses burned to the ground due to the water shortening the electrical system. In 2013, the major rivers in the central part of Europe flooded when they went over their banks after several days of heavy rains in late May and early June. The flooding affected the southeastern parts of Germany, the Czech Republic, and in particular, Austria. Especially the southern German city of Passau was severely affected. On June the 3rd, the water level reached 12.5 meters above normal, which is the highest water level measured since 1505. More than 100 people died, while thousands were evacuated from the floodwaters. Summer and spring floods from rivers in Central Europe are often associated with a particular type of low pressure, which has its origin in the area south of the Alps in the Mediterranean. The cost of the flooding in 2013 has not yet been estimated, but it is expected that the extent of the damages will be bigger than the floods in the same area in 2012, which cost 56 billion kroners. But what will happen in Denmark when the temperature rises? We will probably experience three seasons instead of four. The summers will be hot and dry with intense thunderstorms and they will last until October. Then comes a kind of autumn winter which will be a mixture of sun, storms and lots of rain. Spring ends quickly within a couple of weeks into March or April. Denmark will also be home to new species of animals and plants. It may be that some of those we know today become extinct or travel to another country, while new ones come from warmer climates. One of the clearest signs of global warming in Denmark is the increasing number of floods. The sea level rises and floods, houses and roads, 
since the existing sewer systems cannot contain that much rain all at once. Der er mange måder, at vi kan imødegå de her klimaforandringer. For eksempel kan vi blive bedre til, når vi bygger, og være klar på, at der kan være bygninger, der ikke skal ligge så lavt, eller de simpelthen skal være klimasikret. Vi vil nok se færre, der, der har kældre. Der vil være områder, hvor man ikke har graver kældre ud. Og vi vil kunne se, at, at vi skal håndtere vandet på en mere intelligent måde. At vi skal lade være at putte det hele ned i kloakkerne og køre det rundt ned under byen, men måske håndtere meget mere af det på overfladen. Og hvis vi nu ser på det her ekstra vand som en mulighed, i stedet for kun et problem, så kan vi jo lave mere spændende byer ved at have vandet på overfladerne. For eksempel ved at lave kanaler eller ved at lave søer i landskabet, sådan så folk kan være ved vandet og blive tiltrukket af det. Så man behøver ikke kun at se det her som et problem, man kan også løse det på en måde, så vi skaber mere spændende byer og vi skaber nogle landskaber, hvor der er mere plads til vandet. To understand the challenges we are facing today in relation to flooding as well as the risk of floods in the future, we will use virtual reality models to analyze and understand the impacts of present and future rain. On a larger scale, aircrafts with LIDAR lasers are used for measurements. This laser is a type of sonar which measures the height differences in the landscape. On a smaller scale, as in small urban areas with few houses, or for instance a school or an enterprise, it is easier and less costly to do measurements by drones that take pictures of the area. The pictures are then used to create a three-dimensional map that can be loaded onto a computer. Når man har en 3D-model af sin by inde i computeren, så kan vi hælde regn ned over den her 3D-model, og så kan vi se, hvor det er, den er følsom, og hvor det er, der kommer oversvømmelser. Man kan så også gå hen og se, hvad kan vi så lave om inde i computermodellen for at se, hvordan man kan reducere oversvømmelserne. In other words, we are able to expose a city to the amount of rain we expect to experience in the future. In this way, we'll be able to model the consequences of the climate change means we can predict the risks precisely and take action before damages caused by flooding increase. It also allows us to find the cheapest and most efficient solutions for Denmark. Sådan et område som det her er skabt perfekt til at reducere oversvømmelser. Det er en fodboldbane, det er grønt. Der sker faktisk ikke ret meget, hvis det bliver oversvømmet. Og hvis man kigger på det her område, så er der endda nogen, der har bygget en dig omkring det, så det afgrænser og holder på vandet. Så det eneste, man skal gøre her, det er faktisk bare at købe en pump og pumpe vandet op fra de omkringliggende områder, som ellers vil blive oversvømmet, når der kommer en kraftig regn. Og det er den slags ting, som man kan tætte sig ned og teste i computermodellen, før man gør det i virkeligheden. Hvis man tænker lidt fremad, så har vi en hel masse grønne områder i Danmark, hvor der ikke vil ske ret meget, hvis der kommer oversvømmelser en gang hver 10. eller hver 20. år. Og det er betydeligt billigere, end at grave kloakker op og lægge rør under jorden. The weather forecast for the 21st century predicts an increase of the kind of torrential rains we see today. Specifically, the extreme downpours will be 40% more powerful than what they are today. Danish drainage systems are now being designed so that the probability of a flood is 20% each year if it is rainwater. On the other hand, in the case of rainwater mixed with black water, the systems are designed to not flood more than every tenth year on average. In other words, if we do nothing to reduce the load on the drainage systems or to expand our existing sewers, we will be flooded three times as often as we are today. Local Danish authorities are already protecting us from future torrential rains, because they have realized that it is less expensive to be preventive than to clean up after the damage is done. They change because the climate is changing. Do you?